Yes, he's back, 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 back again. No. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm fine. All right. Let's let's talk. Let's talk about this Help this me. picture you got huh? up here, man. Wait. You see it like right, right there. above his face. Please stop rolling your eyes. <laughs> okay. All right. This is called a sea pig. I honestly don't know. <laughs> a sea pig. A sea pig. Yep. I can't even describe this thing. It's... It's a third grade art project. It is. It's terrible. <laughs> it's a third grade art project. It is. It is. To I me, it just looks like it's made of clay. And then... The carrot sticking out. That's what you said earlier. Ugh. Like, the carrot is just... It's like a carrot. Okay. Yeah, no, I And then it's just made of clay. Yeah. And then they glazed it. And then... They used dirt for eyes. Dirt for eyes. Yes. Wow. They painted it on and then super glue and hot glue or whatever they use. <laughs> and then I feel like this always happens with third grade art projects. You just always drop it and that one piece comes off, which is that like other antenna. The other antenna? Yeah. <laughs> nice. To me, it just looks like a really bad genetically modified <laughs> vegetable. It was genetically modified, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Maze I Runner. Tell. I, I can tell. It was Maze Runner. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh yeah it's terrible. I don't know. You let us know, let us know what you think. This put, put the comment below. Weird. I think it's, it's fake. Weird. I think it's fake too. It's a third grade art project. Definitely confirmed. Fake. It's a third grade art project confirmed. What? And we're back. And we're back. Okay. And we're back. Okay. Can we get on with the news? No. Um. <laughs> okay. So this is on. NPR.org. We'll leave a link in the description. Um, this is from WNYC.org. Uh, the article was by Sarah Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Gonzalez. Yes, okay, so. It's Gonzalez. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> uh, basically, this news article is about these fishermen that caught. That caught these uh, fish that are contaminated. It, they caught a plastic bag with the fish, um, and it says that um, that according to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, children, pregnant women, and women who might one day want to be pregnant should not eat any fish from most of the waters in New Jersey. This is where it gets real scary. Scary. Yeah, men should only consume <laughs> a catfish or one eel per year, and that's it. One eel or one catfish. I don't so if it's that dangerous, if it's that dangerous, why even bother? That's why you're you're only going to be eating like something. It's like catfish. taking medication that might cure your small problem, but it's going to give you a whole bunch of others at the same time. Yep, it says oh side effects. Uh, blindness, uh, uh, dizziness, and Puking then it never violently. happens. violently. Who knows? <laughs> and then it never happens. But, but, um, I don't, I just don't understand. How could you live like that? Like, you'll only be eating, like, 75 eels or catfish. I mean, you gotta be struggling in life if you're gonna and eat or catfish from this river. Or it looks like any waters in New Jersey, but, yeah, that's what sorry, New Jersey people. Okay, so in this portion of the video, we are going to discuss the feeding of the fish and also the new corals that we have gotten in the reef tank. All right, so we'll start with the new corals. They were purchased uh, from Aquatic Playground, and they came in yesterday. There are three SPS pieces, two LPS pieces, and a soft coral, which I will get to at the uh, towards the end of this here. Um, the SPS pieces to start out with, there's a green bird's nest, so it's basically a pink bird's nest with green polyps, uh, and then there's a branching acro, a very large branching acro that came in, hopefully, soon to be large, um, but it, it, it's kind of got a, a, a blue kind of hue to the, to the stem itself, and then the polyps are actually kind of a lime green that, that pop out of it. And then there's a uh, there's a browned out uh, acropora that I received as well from Aquatic Playground. Um, and I'm gonna try to see what kind of growth and color I can get out of it with my lights. And then moving down towards the bottom of the tank, we've got uh, a meat coral, 
it's about three by four inches. And to the left of that, you'll see uh, the Lobo, branching Lobo that I got. And it's, uh, it's kind of an orange and green color. Um, I'm hoping that it starts to split and divide and make new uh, new growth uh, branches and, and, and really just hopefully just get bigger down there at the bottom and kind of fill on the bottom part of the tank. And then right over to the left is a, is a small colony of zoas right now, about 25 polyps. They're dragonized zoas. Never thought I'd get those. I'm not a big zoa guy. But I want to see if I can grow a larger colony on a rock and, and see how that does in my tank. <clears throat> so, all in all, for the price point and the uh, the amount of, of corals that I got from, from Aquatic Playground, they look pretty good, and, and I'm pretty impressed with them, so I'll probably wind up using him again if, in the future if I need to. Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about in my tank um, is feeding. So feeding the tank, um, I do it once in the morning. I'm not a huge proponent of overfeeding the aquarium. You've already got enough biological issues going on in the tank that you don't need to add to those problems. So I feed once in the morning and it, enough food for the fish to consume in about a minute flat. And then that's it for the day. Now this food that I feed them consists of the following. I use a rods reef food with a mixture of uh, fuel and then also I use um, some, some zooplankton and, and phytoplankton and this is all mixed in with, with some RODI water and uh, it's put into a squeeze bottle and I, I literally you know just add enough that the fish can consume it in a minute and there's enough small particles in that in that mixture that that I know the corals are gonna get fed as well I don't try to target feed too much right now um, I just want to mostly feed the fish because I know the fish are gonna do well at producing waste and that waste is gonna get carried through the water column and the corals are gonna start picking those up and picking up the nutrients from those so I've been doing that method. Now, what I would like to know from, from the audience out there is, do you feed your corals? So if you go to the link down below at SurveyMonkey, mm -hmm. you'll, uh, you'll be able to go in there and uh, to answer that question, do you feed your corals? And also go check out the uh, other survey that's still going on. It's also on SurveyMonkey. We'll leave that in the description too. And we'll get back to you pretty soon with uh, the results of both of those surveys. It looks like we've run out of time. You should go check out both of our surveys. One of them uh, is a question about do you feed your corals? And the other one is has been up for a couple weeks now, and it's about coral bleaching, and, and do we believe climate change has an effect on coral bleaching? So don't forget to fill those out. Yep. Um, you can go comment on this video to give us some suggestions, or you can email us some photos for the Real or Fake series, and we will see you guys in the next video.